Hi guys! My name is Ingrid Cooper. For those of you who don't know me personally, I am a travel specialist at Sweet Tea Travel and I was just um, visiting Bogota, Colombia, which was this amazing experience. So much to do, so much to see, so much just like culture right there in the city. Um, but unfortunately, what there wasn't a lot of was vegetarian and vegan options for food. Um, and you know, since I'm a vegetarian myself, I know how hard and sometimes a little bit, you know, frustrating it can be to find good authentic local food that is accommodating to certain dietary restrictions, whether voluntary or an allergy or whatever. Um, so I figured I would do a little bit of the legwork for you guys uh, and check out some vegetarian and vegan restaurants in Bogota, Colombia, so I could give you guys some recommendations should you ever go there and want to eat some vegetarian food. So let's check out the first restaurant. So the first place that I went to was called Goku-san. I actually found it by accident because I was looking for a place that I could eat some falafel, but um, the place was closed. It had, you know, permanently closed but hadn't taken down, you know, it's hours and stuff from online. So I went to check it out and it wasn't there. But right across the street was this place called Goku-san that was this, you know, vegan, vegetarian, authentic Colombian food restaurant. And it was so awesome because we walked in, the guy that owns it was also the same guy who cooks everything and he was super accommodating. He said, yeah, I mean, we have our menu, but you guys can really just invent whatever you want to eat and I'll just make it for you real quick, which was so cool. <laughs> he also ended up giving us free gluten-free cake at the end, which was really delicious. Um, yeah, so let's look at what I ate. Here you can see some empanadas, which I was really excited to try because I haven't had the chance to do that before. Um, usually they're filled with meat, but this time they were filled with rice, vegetables, and tofu, and they had a really nice um, radish dipping sauce to go with them, and they were really fresh, not too greasy, and really delicious. I also got to try a tofu hamburger that the owner made specially for me. Um, with some nice caramelized onions and vegetables to top it off and some house-made fries on the side, which was also really nice and filling. And to top it all off, I had some house-brewed kombucha, and this is the first time I'd actually seen that in Colombia. The next restaurant that I checked out was kind of a smaller, lesser-known um, restaurant. It was, you know, kind of not in the main touristy part of town. It was kind of towards the southern end of Bogota, which, you know, a lot of the tourist stuff happens in the north. But it was the best food that I had had <laughs> in Bogota. Like, of all the restaurants, you know, this tends to be the case. The mom and pop shop is always the best food. Um, and this was no exception. So, you know, it was this tiny restaurant called Zucchini, spelled with a K instead of the CH. Um, and it was delicious. It was a self-serve buffet and, you know, I could try some traditional Colombian foods that I haven't actually had the opportunity to try before, including, you know, sancocho, some empanadas, and then I also had, you know, some more traditional just vegan options with um, garbanzos and just fried zucchini. So it was just absolutely delicious. Let's check out the food. So here you can see my full plate. It was a self-serve buffet. So I decided to try a little bit of everything. I had some garbanzos, some vegetables, a homemade pineapple cake, and rice, all of which was really delicious. And then over here you can see a traditional Colombian dish called sancocho, which usually has chicken, but this time it was vegetarian, and I was so excited to try it. The next place that I went was kind of more of, you know, for a sweet treat. Um, since, you know, Colombia can be pretty hot in the day. I mean, Bogota is not too bad, but under the sun we all get hot. Um, and so if you've heard of nice cream before, that is the dairy-free ice cream alternative and this has made it down to Colombia as well. So I went to this place called Baby Shakes and got this amazing um, dairy-free milkshake that was lemon and coconut flavored. 
and it was just, you know, so good because, you know, there's a lot of coconut in Colombia and everything, so it was, you know, fresh coconut on top, lemon flavored ice cream, absolutely delicious and such a great way to cool off on kind of a hotter day. This was my lemon ice cream with shaved coconut on top. So the next part of my trip I spent right around what's called Parque La 93, which is probably, you know, the safest and most touristy part of Bogota, because that's where all of the international embassies are located. Um, and so here, you know, there were a lot of international options, which um, Chinese and Japanese food tend to be very accommodating to a vegetarian diet, as well as Indian food. Same thing, I mean, most of the menu is even vegetarian at that point. Um, and even as I was walking past, you know, pretty much all of the shops in that area, there was at least one vegetarian option, which if you have a different dietary restriction, like veganism or if you're gluten-free or something, um, you know, since they were accommodating to vegetarian, I'm sure that they would have been accommodating to vegan as well. So some of the next foods that I tried were a little bit more international cuisine. The cool part was, of course, that you know, Chinese food changes depending on which country is kind of adopting it. So this was, you know, Chinese Colombian food, which has a whole different set of flavors, which was really good. Um, so yeah, let's check out some of the international restaurants in Parque La 93 that I highly recommend. I'm a big fan of Mediterranean food, like falafel. So you can see I tried some baklava, pita bread, and a hummus falafel bowl, which was really filling and super delicious. And then a cucumber refreshing drink as well. This vegan noodle bowl included some influences from Colombia, like cilantro and pineapple in the flavors as well. This was one of the favorite things that I tried. It was kind of like a tofu lettuce wrap from a place called Teriyaki. So delicious, and I loved the fresh sauces as well that had some of the Colombian flavors. So those were some of the restaurants that I tried out and really enjoyed. Of course, there are a ton more of vegan and vegetarian options in Bogota, just because it is the capital and it is so touristic. And of course, that is not always the case for the rest of Colombia, um, just because, you know, veganism, vegetarianism is really not as popular, and a meal is not a meal unless it has meat in it here. Um, and so, you know, when in doubt, look for more international cuisine. Japanese, Indian, and Chinese food are kind of my go-tos, or Mediterranean, um, because they always have, almost always have vegetarian options. And, you know, of course, feel free to contact me or any of the other specialists at Sweet Tea Travel for your special dietary needs while traveling, because I know firsthand exactly how stressful it can be and working with a travel agent can kind of take some of that pressure off. So thank you so much for watching my video today, and don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and follow Sweet Tea Travel and Sweet Tea Travel with Ingrid on Facebook and Instagram. Alright, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!